Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 22 in our incredible tutorial series where you are learning about how to build an IMU based on an Arduino and the most excellent Adafruit BNO055 non-axis sensor. <clears throat> I will need you to pour yourself a nice big cup of black coffee. And today I will also have a mug of iced coffee. So I will have dueling coffee cups today. You can feel free to do the same. Just don't put any sugar in it. None is needed. Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. You guys that are helping out are keeping me in premium coffee beans. Those of you who are not helping yet, think about looking in the description down below. There's a link over to my Patreon account. Think about skedaddling over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's get in and talk about what we are going to learn today. First thing I feel like I should do is apologize for lesson number 21, which was the last lesson in the series. Man, I was just off that day, and I'm usually way better prepared for my videos, but I just like some of those commands, I just didn't have them on the top of my head, and I hadn't slept good the night before. There were some disturbances outside with some things in our chicken, so I didn't sleep well, and so I was just really off my game in lesson number 21, but I'm back hopefully in my prime today, and hopefully this lesson will go a lot better. Appreciate you guys' patience when I have trouble with a lesson. Every once in a while, everyone has an off day, even me, and lesson number 21 was my day to be a little bit off. Now, what we are going to do today is we're going to kind of give you a heads up of the direction that we're going with these series of lessons in the future. I'm going to kind of show you where we're going and then today, I'm going to show you some gear that you're going to need if you want to continue to follow along. And so I want to give you the link so that you can go ahead and get your gear so that when I get to the lesson next week, you will already have everything that you need to start following along with what I am doing. But let me show you what I am doing. Perhaps I can whet. Perhaps I can whet your appetite. I just had a little artificial intelligence project go haywire on me over there. I'll show you what that is. That's not related to this project, but since it just went haywire, this is my Jetson Nano artificial intelligence tracking system. You can see that I'm tracking this with a pan tilt camera. Pretty neat. Think about lo looking over there on my Jetson Nano tutorials if you haven't done that yet, but I have been distracted and show you what we are working on. Now what you can see here is you can see your old friend the Arduino Nano that we've been working on. You can see your old friend the BNO055 but then what you can see is we have built a pan tilt. I've got so many cords here I'm going to hurt myself if I'm not careful. We have built a little pan tilt platform here that we have our system mounted on. Can you guess what this is going to do? Go ahead, make a guess. The suspense builds, but let me go ahead and show you. Uh, the things that we have new here besides the pan tilt servos is, you can see that we added a little power supply here because running those servos is more than what I would want to do just on the Arduino Nano. So let's go ahead, hold your breath, I'm going to turn this thing on. Ah! Okay, started off a little awkward, smash my finger, but let's see this thing, okay. So I am going to roll this. Let's see what's the best way to do it. I'll hold it over here like this. I am going to roll this your way. Boom, what does it do? Roll it my way. It stays level no matter what I do with it. Now I'm kind of focusing on the roll. Now what you can watch here is I'm going to do a pitch and it corrects out the pitch. Or I do a roll and a pitch and it corrects it out. So what you can kind of see is 
no matter what I do with this platform, it self levels. Now you know with this BNO fifty five zero BNO zero fifty five that it will do pan tilt and yaw, and or uh, roll pitch and yaw. And what we're sort of doing here is we're sort of compensating for the pitch like this and the roll, but we're not trying to compensate yaw. Now you could add down here a third servo and you could do all three, but just for what I'm interested in, I'm interested in keeping this thing level. And so this is kind of the direction that we're going with this project. And I kind of think that this is exciting because this is a little bit of a control system. And as we go through this lesson, you're going to start learning some things about uh, control system. And this is just, I think, a really neat little project to learn about control systems, learn about servos, and learn a little bit more about the BNO 055. I'm going to turn this off before I hurt myself again. And I'm going to put it down and then we're going to kind of talk about what do you need to be doing in order to get ready for this lesson. So what I have is I have in the links down below in the description, I have links to the things that you will be needing. Good news is they don't cost very much. And so hopefully you can go ahead and order those and hopefully you'll want to continue on with this series. As you know, what we've been doing so far in this series is visualizations in the virtual world using vPython. On. But now we want to start interacting in the real world. The other thing I will say about this little project, you see these two cords that are coming in. All these cords do is just bring power in. I have one cable powering the power supply and the other cable powering the Arduino Nano. If we hook this cord to a little battery, this thing would be completely mobile. The computer isn't doing anything. These cords are, they're not doing anything other than supplying power. A simple battery here and I could power this thing and not have any cables at all and it could be completely free floating in the real world. But let's go ahead and jump in and talk about what type of equipment you are going to need if you want to continue to follow uh, along in this, uh, in this uh, series of tutorials. So I will change my camera view here. Okay, the first bit of gear that you're going to need is you're going to need a couple of good servos. And these days I am recommending the high-tech HS422 servos. Unfortunately, these are a little bit pricey. They're about 15 bucks each and you're going to need two of them. Okay, now I know that in some earlier videos I had recommended these cheaper servos, which are the uh, MG995 servos. They're exactly the same size. They operate the same. They fit in the same uh, pan tilt bracket and so forth. And i would had a lot of luck with these uh, MG995s for years. But I'll tell you, the last couple of batches that I've gotten, I've had some real problems with. And I'm getting to the point, the last orders that I've had, about half of these things have not worked. And so you can order these cheaper ones at your own peril but I would say there's nothing more expensive than a cheap servo because if you get in there and start having glitchy problems or stability problems with the servo trying to tweak in your control system then turns out to be kind of a nightmare and so I really am going to recommend at this point that you go ahead and get these more expensive uh, servos I've had some of these uh, I've had some of these high techs for over five years I've used them in a lot of projects I've never Never had a problem with one so let's go ahead and let's get these better servos the next thing that you will need is you will need to create that pan tilt platform so you will need this little kit and I will show you in next week's lesson how to put this thing together this actually comes with no instructions and you will go insane if you try to put it together you notice how they don't even have a picture of the assembled unit they just send you these parts and it was kind of hard to figure out how to put it together but I have had success and I've put three or four of them together already and I will show you how to put it together uh, next week so you will need the bracket. So you will need servos, you will need a bracket, and then you will need this little power supply. Okay, this little power supply, good news is it's only six bucks. The even better news is if you have been following along 
on my other Arduino series, if you have this eLEGO kit, the eLEGO kit already has that component in it. So it might be you might already have uh, you might already have that component. Also, let's see. It looks like that power supply is six bucks. The entire eLEGO kit, which has boatloads of components in it, is thirty five dollars. You might think about buying that instead of just the one component for seven dollars but i'm hoping that most of you already have this and so you won't need to get that and you guys know i really try to limit what i ask you guys to buy i try to teach as much as i can with you having to spend the min minimum amount possible and then i also look for good deals on things find something that's good and a reasonable price uh, for you guys to follow along okay what you also will need, or maybe not, is this 5-volt power supply. So that power supply will power this power supply, or it will, uh, it will fire up this power supply. And I tried running this whole thing on, uh, you know, just a little 9-volt battery, and this was too much to try to run on a 9-volt battery. So it's good to have the little wall wart. Now, the chances are you might already have one of these. It's a 9-volt supply. Uh, and if I look at this, this little, uh, this little power supply wants something less than 14 volts. And so if you already have a wall wart that is between, uh, let's say, 6 and 12 volts, you could use that and you wouldn't need to buy this wall wart. But this one's kind of a nice one because it plugs right into that little Elegu, uh, that, that little Elegu power supply and will have you powered up. Another thing that is very nice, and this is only $7, this is a nice to have, not a have to have, but it seems like I always run short of cables. And when I'm trying to do a project, I'm always missing the kind that I want. Well, this is a monster package of them for, it looks like, $7. And the really cool thing is I like how they come kind of stuck together. So you can make a ribbon cable or, like, you know, if you have four pins together, you can peel four off together. I like how they're nicely color-coded. And this is the best part. What do you see? You see male to female. That's cool, but how many times do you find yourself needing male to male? There's those, and of course, the female to female. And so the nice thing is with this kit, you get all the wires that you need. I also like it that these are a little bit longer, so connecting to the servos and stuff, these are very useful. All of these things that I've just shown you, they're kind of cool things that are useful to have around. And they're things that you could use in this project or in other projects that will be coming down the line. And so let me put these up. You know, I actually am going to order a couple more of these packets of wires because it seems like I am always running short of wires. Now, if I can only get the wires back in the case, there they go. I like to put things away, keep them tidy, you know. Okay, so let's see. I do believe, if I am not mistaken, I do believe that that is primarily going to be what you need in order to move forward with these lessons. And again, I think this is just super cool that ah, I smashed my finger. Oh, I need better code here because there it goes. Okay. I need to have a smarter way that I turn this on so it doesn't smash my finger every time. Okay. So uh, I have another version of this program. Like this is just set to put it at zero, but you could hold it at any desired roll and pitch that you want. So it doesn't have to just be flat. You can set it at a certain angle and it will keep it there. So I think this is, uh, this is interesting and a lot of fun. And I hope you guys will play along and enjoy this project. The other project that I'm really thinking of besides, uh, like I show here, back to my... Jetson Nano artificial intelligence project where I have this camera on this pan tilt base that's basically putting the things together that I showed you in the you know in those links but what I think would be really neat right now this thing is moving based on an object of interest so it's tracking that object of interest okay but I think what would be really neat would be to maybe like take the BNO 055 and like affix it to your head 
and then have it connected to a remote camera and then what the camera would be is on a pan tilt platform and if I look left the camera points left if I look right the camera points right or up or down wherever my head moves then the remote camera would move that way as well and so I think that would be another neat project to do and that would be basically with this same set of equipment that I just said that you guys needed to uh, order so this is a short lesson uh, you know I haven't made a lesson in a while but we've just released lesson number 21 so this is lesson number 22 and yes indeed we will be moving forward with this series of lessons Okay, guys, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that notification button. So ring the bell so you will get notifications when I have new videos going up. And I will talk to you guys next week where we will learn how to put this thing together. So I think probably in, in the next lesson, my goal is to just get the physical assembly done and to just be controlling the servos not controlling them but just moving the servos where the the Arduino is talking to the servos and moving them and it's physically assembled and then in this in the following that would be like uh, lesson 24 what we'll do is we'll go in and actually start coding this thing to show you how to do this this is pretty neat because you're going to start learning a little bit about control systems and how to how to do control systems it's a little more to think about than maybe what you would uh, initially think so really appreciate you guys tuning in again appreciate you guys that are helping me out over at Patreon Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.